A very exciting episode of Locked On Blue Devils coming your way today. We've got everything that you need to know about the upcoming Duke men's basketball season. What freshman could be making a big impact for John Shire as he enters his second season as head coach? And what in the world is going on in the class of 2024 and 2025 recruiting? We talk about all of that and a whole lot more on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi everybody, Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with JJ Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on this Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Super excited to bring you another installment of our program. Lockdown Blue Devils is your daily podcast devoted to everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. Tons of basketball conversation going on this time of year. We're also really excited about the upcoming season for Duke football. How exciting is it that head coach Mike Elko and then John Shire on the basketball front, both getting ready for their second seasons on the job. And we're going to be discussing all of those things on Locked On Blue Devils. On today's show in particular, really excited to bring on a new friend of the program, Pablo Kong is a contributor for Ball Durham. You can also hear him on the Five Point Family podcast covering Duke basketball. Going to have a great conversation with him. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and review. Also, watch the show daily on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Your support means a whole lot to us here at Locked On, and our Locked On network is doing incredible things this time of year, so thank you for your support. Without further ado, let me bring on the aforementioned Pablo Kong, who joins us here on the program today. Pablo, welcome into the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, I appreciate it, JJ. Thanks for reaching out and uh, having me, man. I'm excited to uh, talk some Duke basketball, man, and let's go. Hey, it's what we do best. We love talking Duke Coop. So uh, let's get right to it, man. Really, really thrilled with uh, the stories that you've been putting out lately there for Ball Durham and uh, your recent work that you've done talking about freshmen looking to make an impact for the upcoming season. Big picture here, you look at the last 10, 15 years for mm-hmm. Duke basketball, it's always kind of been the freshmen that have defined in what way the team is going to go, right? And it seems as though this year's team is certainly going to be in that same mold as well, where you've got sophomores returning, but once again, it's freshmen that could have a big impact and could really dictate how well the season's going to turn out. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, I think we got some big time guys coming in, really, really versatile class. I, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. And that's why I kind of wrote that piece. And uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that and just about how the freshmen could really just make an impact on uh, this season coming up. So, yeah. Is it the one and done era you think that's been the biggest reason as to why it's been freshmen as of late, uh, the, the caliber of players <clears throat> coming into play for Duke? I mean, let's do take a look at the last 10, 15 years worth of evidence because freshmen really do make an impact. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, one and done era definitely, you know, has been the reason why, you know, it's always freshmen, you know, leading the pack. And uh, not to mention that, you know, Duke is the, the gold standard. So we're going to get the best players and the, and they generally are freshmen. So that's what, you know, that's what Mike Krzyzewski went with. And now John Shire. And I think we're going to keep the ball rolling, JJ. I can't wait to see what this year's team's going to be able to do. You look at last year's freshmen, obviously two of them leave and go to the NBA draft and Derek Lively, the second and Derek Whitehead turned themselves into first round selections. And then a trio comes back for another season and Kyle Filipowski, Mark Mitchell and Tyrese Proctor, the decision for those three. Let's talk about that for a moment, Pablo coming back for another year. What did you make of their decisions? Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I was super excited. I expected some of those guys to come back. I didn't expect them all to come back. You know, I, I really, you know, for a while, I thought that uh, in the beginning, I thought Kyle Filipowski was gone for sure. Same. Um, and I didn't expect Jeremy Roach to come back. I know you didn't mention Jeremy Roach, but I didn't expect him to come back. And then just with the with the showing that Tyrese Proctor put on late in the season, you know, and how I had all the scouts drooling over him, all the NBA, they wanted him. I really didn't expect him to come back, but I'm 
very glad that they all came back. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen uh, with this season. The number of times I've talked about the fact that it's Adrian Wojnarowski breaking the news that Tyrese Proctor is returning for his sophomore season and that he is now a potential lottery pick going into the 2024 draft. The fact that Woj is breaking that news for you on the Duke basketball front about a player returning for his sophomore season, not even declaring, I think that's when you kind of realize, wait a minute, uh, big things are absolutely coming for year two Tyrese Proctor. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think Tyrese um... – He's probably, I'm probably excited to see him most, you know, I want to see his improvements, you know, and just, I just want him to pick up to where he left off last year and that showing that he put on in the Tennessee game. It really just, I mean, he showed flashes. He looked like an NBA point guard. So I'm just happy, like I said, to have him back and it's going to be a fun season. I tell you, JJ, I think he's going to, I think he's going to drive the ship and I can see uh, Tyrese making like all American team and uh, Duke making a very deep run, if not winning the championship. No doubt. I mean, what he's able to do, his playmaking ability, the passing ability like we talk about, uh, it's always been the shooting that has been the one concern that we discussed last Mm -hmm. season for Proctor. Uh, We won't lie, he got off to a really bad start from shooting from the outside. The free throw numbers were always so impressive, which gave you confidence that at some point that outside shot is going to start to fall. And then in the second half of the season, particularly the final you know, eight to 10 games, Proctor's turning into a near 40% shooter from three point range. If you get that. And then, like I said, combined with the playmaking, some of the lobs at the rim that we could see from Proctor on his dribble drives, like, boy, that is going to be one uh, really impressive basketball player going into the upcoming season. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right about that. I think, you know, his, you know, the improvement in the shooting, that's one of the biggest things. That's the biggest question mark for him. Um, he's always been a good shooter. I just think that, you know, with him getting to campus late last year, you know, he just really didn't get the reps and he was kind of in and out the lineup, you know, a lot early on in the season. So I think it was more or less a confidence thing as well. But once he knew that John Shire, you know, trusted him, that's when he really started to turn it on. And I'm just excited. Like I said, I think Tyrese is going to have a very, very, very big season. and he's, he's, he's due to do some big things. Some of the outside shooting numbers also for Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell going into their sophomore season is something that we want to watch flip kind of the reverse of Proctor in that Kyle Filipowski started really strong from the outside. And unfortunately, the longer the season went, the worse the three-point numbers uh, ended up for Filipowski. And then for Mark Mitchell, the fact that he was one of Duke's more consistent three-point shooters, I don't know that people necessarily – expected that right and and looking at it uh looking at his shot in particular pablo i'm a lefty myself so i've got a special place in my heart for those fellow lefties but we had some line drive jump shots from mark mitchell that didn't always look the best but he made them which is what matters at the end of the day so if those two guys can also add to the outside shooting going into their second seasons i think that's going to be big for duke yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, especially with Flip, you know, he, he's, you know, he's always been a good shooter his whole career. You know, I followed him even in high school. He's always been a good shooter. The shot always looks good. It's just I think it was just a matter of him just being tired last year. And maybe the hips bothered him some, you know, you know, the legs have a lot, a lot to do with shooting. <laughs> so I think, uh, you know, that might have bothered him late. And he was, you know, let's face it, he was busy. He was getting roughed up, you know, in some games. So that definitely played a part. And as far as Mark Mitchell goes, yeah, no, I, I what was he like the second leading uh, three point shooting percentage uh, on yeah. the team? Yeah. I was really shocked by that. And just by some of the highlights too, it looks like he changed his shot a little bit. Like he doesn't have so much of a hitch now. So it's looking a little better and I'm excited to see what he's going to do. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be a big season for those sophomores. And it's also going to be a big season for freshmen. And we'll talk about them making an impact uh, this upcoming season. What a class it is for John Shire featuring four highly touted freshmen. And we're going to discuss a lot of them when we come back after our first time out here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And here's why. Make sure you take your first swank at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount back in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 that you could spend betting on everything from the money line to over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All-Star has come and gone for Major League Baseball. The trade deadline is fast approaching and tons of opportunities to bet MLB. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. 
Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on as FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Pablo Kong, who's a contributor for Ball Durham. All right, we're talking about one of your latest stories at BallDurham.com. Freshmen set to make an impact on the 2023-2024 team. There are four freshmen that are walking in to play for Duke at Cameron Indoor Stadium this season. Give us kind of a rundown of the class, Pablo. Yeah, so uh, the, the four freshmen that you speak of, J.J., uh, we got Caleb Foster, uh, Jared McCain, Sean Stewart, and TJ Power. Um, uh, they all, you know, all elite freshmen. I think they all were five. They all were five-star freshmen uh, at one point or another. Um, I'm just excited for the class. I think they just, the, the depth that we're going to have, you know, with all, you know, all that we, that we brought back so far. Um, and then just the story that I wrote, I think that the freshmen, you know, who, like, who do I believe can contrib- contribute the most? Me personally, I think Caleb Foster just because of his skill set, I think he's set to, to, to contribute the most. Um, you know, other guys I talk to, like my five point fam, a lot of guys are saying Sean Stewart. Uh, some guys are saying uh, Jared McCain. So we, we're just going to have to see what happens. But I do believe that just because of uh, Caleb Foster, his skill set and what he can do as far as getting his own shot off the dribble. Um, he's a bigger guard. He's about six four, six five ish. Um, and he's he's played point his whole life. So if he's playing point guard, he's always he's probably going to have somebody smaller on him. And then, you know, the wiggle that he has is, is, is pretty elite. So he's going to be able to do a, a lot of damage uh, as far as uh, scoring and anything as far as playmaking. Give me a little bit more on the thought process there, Pablo. You, you mentioned it just a bit, but when you're thinking about freshmen making an impact and for Duke fans out there set to make an impact, what are those factors? Is it just let's start with guys returning and where the holes are within the roster itself? Or what specifically were you looking at when you asked yourself the question? Because that's how all these stories come together, right? You've got to ask yeah. your question, yourself the question first, Pablo. Yeah. What's the thought process into yeah. deciding who is going to make the impact? Yeah, so for me, I just kind of try to put myself in, uh, you know, obviously I'm not a Duke coach, but I try to put myself in John Shire's shoes. Sure. Try to envision, you know, what does he envision his team doing, you know, as far as from an offensive standpoint, from a, you know, a defensive standpoint, and then just different things like that. Because, you know, I've coached pretty much, like I said, you know, 15 plus years, um, and I know strategy and things like that. So I try to look at it from a coaching perspective. Um, so as far as filling holes, yeah, I mean, that's, that's sometimes that's what it is. And I know that, you know, like guys like Caleb Foster, they fit well with Duke because if you see like Duke's offense and the way they run, you know, they run some stuff, but ultimately, you know, when the shot clock is going down or whatever, you need a guy that can get a shot, you know, and Caleb Foster fits that mold. And so that's why I'm really, really high on Caleb Foster and, uh, you know, him being able to do that and then just, you know, plug and play. So I'm excited uh, about everything that I see so far, you know, all the highlights going on uh, in the practices and things. So I think that it's going to be a big season for Caleb Foster, uh, ultimately. What does the scoring potential look like for Foster? He's, I mean, obviously you've got a lot of great returning guards and then mm-hmm. the fact of Filipowski and Mitchell coming back, uh, some easy post buckets for Ryan Young, I would imagine, this upcoming mm-hmm. season as well. So scoring, we start to kind of break down where points could go and that sort of thing. I'm curious how you think Foster can blend in. Uh, I just think it just all depends on the role, JJ. I think uh, it just depends on how much John Shire, you know, wants to let him get loose. Um, because, you know, there's always gonna, yeah. yeah, there's always going to be a pecking order and it's probably going to start with Flip. It's probably going to look real similar to what it looked like last year. You know, Flip, uh, Jeremy, um, and I think Mitchell and then it was Tyrese. So it's just all about how they want to play. Um, I think Caleb, though, he he has the potential to, you know, he can he can be around that eight to ten point point range if uh, if they give if they allow him to be, you know. So that's that's just my belief. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I I've talked more, I believe, on on Jared McCain sort of and the impact that he can make this upcoming season. And now I'm starting to convince myself, this is what we do this time of year, overreactions and whatnot. But Pablo, I'm starting to convince myself that I'm not talking enough about Caleb Foster and the impact that he could have. And I'm I'm wondering if that's because Jeremy Roach is coming back for another season, right? I mean, if it's not 
Roach going into his senior year, I feel like we'd have way more of the conversation of Caleb Foster and the role that he's going to have on the team going into the season. But with the four guards, Roach, Proctor, McCain, and then you, you mentioned Caleb Foster, like that's going to be a lot of uh, moving pieces that Shire and that coaching staff are going to have to manage and juggle. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's, it's John Shire. I think he's up for the task. You know, he was a guard, you know, in his career at Duke and uh, his pro career. So I think he can do it. I think he can manage it. I don't think it should be such a problem. Um, and I, they're all they all do similar things. So as far as plugging and playing, I think, you know, they're easy, easily replaceable. Only thing is that, you know, obviously guys, you know, have a little more experience than the, than the younger guys coming in. But to me, it's like, hey, Jared McCain, Caleb Foster, throw them into the fire. You know, let, let's see what they got. I think they'll be able to handle it, and I think it should it should bode well for Duke. Do you think it's the three-point shooting for Jared McCain that's going to let him make an impact right out of the gates? Like, is that the one area of his game that's going to make the biggest impression right away, or is it something else? Uh, yeah, so just when you're looking at it from a holistic standpoint, like, I think every you – know, I, I try to look at it a little differently, J.J., um, I, I know because I know Jared McCain's game. I, I mean, I've seen him play uh, for years now. Uh, and I think that he's he, he's so much more than a shooter. And I think the thing about Jared McCain, his best attribute is that he's a winner. You know, very coachable kid and he's a winner. So, yeah, he's an elite shooter. Um, he's going to do well. You know, I, I think that, you know, I think that's what everybody holds on to so much. But I think he's going to show a lot more than just his shooting, J.J. So um, him shooting, though, like – yeah, we can expect him to light it up for sure. But I think he's going to be, you know, he's going to be good at making plays. And, you know, he's a good, really good defender. And he's just a good team guy. So he knows how to win. So he's a shot maker, JJ. So, Pablo, we're also talking about uh, the big fellas coming into mm -hmm. Duke this upcoming season and definitely need to give some love to Sean Stewart. We're at the portion of the summer where uh, we're getting practice footage. We're getting highlight clips uh, released by the Duke men's basketball social media staff. We're getting big eyeball emojis from Sean Stewart's athleticism already. Yeah. Uh, what what can we expect from Stewart, you think, making an impact as a freshman? Yeah, so Sean Stewart, you know, big-time athlete, kid from Florida. Uh, you know, he's got a connection to Grand Hill. Big-time athlete, strong frame, uh, defender, really good mid-range shooter. He can step out, hit the three. Uh, we could just – we could expect a guy that's going to be high energy, J.J., a guy that's going to be high energy, doesn't stop – uh, his motor is always running hot. I think he's going to uh, do really, really well for Duke, and he's going to surprise a lot of people. You know, he's only he's going to hit the boards hard. Uh, that's something that we really need somebody to do. Is we need somebody to rebound, to help flip down there and get some rebounds. So I think it's going to bode well as well for Duke, uh, just having Sean Stewart out there. It's just going to be – I'm just going to be really – it's going to be interesting to see how Shire plays him. I think he will keep him in a post, but he might see some high post, uh, some, some high post play as well. I'm curious about the rim protection aspect of, of Stewart's game and what that's going to look like for Duke the past two seasons. It feels as though uh, we're definitely going to get more of Kyle Filipowski at the five. Yep. But you look at the past two seasons for Duke basketball, when you look at that five spot, you look at block percentages and mm -hmm. you see Derek Lively the second and then the year prior to a greater degree, Mark Williams and yep. how elite they were nationally in that regard. That's big shoes to fill from the yeah. rim protection dynamic for Duke. And that they will take a step back this upcoming season. I just don't see someone quite reaching that level. But that doesn't mean that the defense as a whole has to drop off, if that makes sense. Kind of speak to that a little bit, if you will, Pablo, and how this Duke team defensively can still be as impactful despite the fact that they won't have as elite of rim protectors as they've had the two seasons prior. Yeah, no. So I think that, um, you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to do the work. You know, uh, you know, Kyle Filipowski, he isn't like the best low post defender, but he's not bad. Um, so I think it's going to have to be like center by committee. I think Christian Reeves uh, is going to have to, you know, really step up and, and do something. But um, I think, you know, I, I, I maybe something might happen in August, JJ, that we might be able sure. To pick somebody up I mean you just never know you never know what might happen you know what I mean the transfer portal obviously is still open for some guys so it's going to be interesting to see what happens never say never and as Shire yeah. said if, if, if this is the squad like that's certainly a, a team that he's ready to rock and roll and coach so uh, mm -hmm. we'll see what that looks like yep. locked on Blue Devils here today JJ Jackson alongside Pablo Kong a contributor for Ball Durham tell me a little bit about your work and uh, where we can read more of your stuff and listen to you Pablo 
Yeah, so uh, you can find me on Twitter at Coach P. Kong, and I'm also a contributor at the Ball Durham with Kevin Connolly. You can find us at balldurham.com. Uh, and also, you can catch me on the podcast with the Five Point, uh, five point Podcast with my uh, other four buddies. I love that. We'll be sure to check all of that out more. So as we move forward in our conversation here today, I do want to talk a little bit of recruiting for the class of 2024 and 2025. Uh, we're kind of in a waiting game right now with the 2024 class in terms of who's going to be that next commitment. We've got already two commits uh, mm -hmm. knocked down for Duke with Isaiah Evans and Darren Harris. Uh, where else is Duke at right now? Who are other names to be watching um, as we're looking at the calendar here in the middle of July? So if I had to be a betting man, I think the next chip to fall should be Flory Badunga. Um, I do – you know, not only do I hope, but I, I do see it as a positive, and I do believe that he will commit to Duke. Um, after that, I think it's just Dylan Harper. You know, it's, he's going to commit sometime during the uh, the the uh, his high school season, and I think the longer it goes, the better for us. Though I will say that I will say the longer it goes, the better for us. I think we got maybe have a little bit of ground to catch up uh, in that recruitment, um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens. JJ, I'm just. Uh, I'm optimistic. I'll say that. Yeah, no, look, you, you're talking about a center in Badunga, which is very needed for Duke when you look at what next mm -hmm. year's team could look like. And then Dylan Harper possibly at that guard spot. A yeah. lot of people uh, know that this is a two-horse race between Duke and Rutgers, and Rutgers mm -hmm. has to feel pretty good given the family ties that Harper's family have to that program. But to your point, the longer this goes, maybe it does start to favor um, Duke a little bit longer and, and then you know there could be other players possibly added to that 2024 class as well because like you know like all great coaches know you've got to make sure that you've got backup plans kind of ready to go when you're putting together your recruiting classes yeah no you're absolutely right JJ I know that uh we they sent the offer out to VJ Edgecombe that's another player um that if uh you know I'm, I'm not sure the the, you know, the real philosophy behind what Shire's trying to do with that one. I, but I do know VJ Edgecombe is a heck of a player and it will be definitely, you know, welcoming him to the Blue Devil family if uh, we could pick him up for sure. What do we need to know about the 2025 class? 2025 class, obviously the big fish you got out there, Cooper Flagg, Cameron Boozer. Those are the two big fish. Uh, we just offered uh, Caleb Wilson, uh, I think last week it was, they offered Caleb Wilson. And I think that you'll see some other offers come down the pipe soon. I, I believe that uh, uh, Michael Brown should probably be getting an offer from Duke sometime soon. That's the point guard out of Florida, plays for a uh, Southeastern Elite, I think the team is called, uh, really elite guard. So uh, 2025 class, you know how it is. It, it's, it's loaded. So, you know, you can go a lot of different ways with that, but, you know, uh, Shire and the staff, you know, they, they have their priorities. So I think that they're doing a good job of prioritizing the guys that they really want and they're at all their games. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I can expect uh, some commitments to come from that 2025 class. Yeah, no, you're right. It's noteworthy to kind of look at Peach Jam and, and where the coaching mm -hmm. staff was at for all of that, not making sure that they didn't miss a single Cooper flag game. And then uh, the Boozer twins as well, Cameron right there at the top of the class, but uh, mm -hmm. Caden is another player that, uh, Duke is certainly in on and family ties, family connection there as the summer continues to turn to fall and that sort of thing. Uh, reclassification is something that is always thrown out and something that everyone is wanting to watch and be on the radar for. And so who knows, we could have an 11th hour switch up Pablo. And next thing you know, some 2025 guys could turn into 2024, 2024 and 2020. I mean, it's just this time of year, things get really, really crazy we just have to look back to a year ago when we got the late reclassification uh, announcement from Tyrese Proctor. We see eight miles down the road in Chapel Hill. They've got their point guard at Elliott Cato, who's coming a year earlier than advertised. So uh, you never know what's going to happen in that case as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if it does happen, you know, I hope, you know, everybody's they're They're not, let's say they're expecting uh, the reclass from Cooper. Cooper flag. I have no intel on that, so I don't know. I can only be hopeful. Um, that would be a very, very big get uh, for Coach Shire and the staff if they were uh, able to pick up a Cooper flag a year early. That'd be great. 
we'll see what happens. And, of course, we know that we're going to be following your coverage all along, again, at balldurham.com and on Twitter at Coach P. Kong. Pablo, really enjoyed you on the program today. We're going to have to do this again sometime soon. Thanks for being here, okay? Thanks, JJ. You have a good day, brother. That's my pal Pablo Kong, and he's joining us here on Locked on Blue Devils today. What a fun conversation that was, and that's going to do it for our show today. Thanks so much for being a part of the conversation. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and subscribe as well. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you, and good day.